Now in this part then, we're asked to show that the graph of y equals f of x is a translation of the graph y equals x squared, which is this green graph here. And because of that, we're asked to find the equation of f of x. Well, you can see it's a translation because if we take this graph here, okay, we can just simply slide it across. Let's just try that. Okay, slide it across to the right three places and then move it down four places and it will land on the original graph. So how do we generate that equation then? Let's just take this back to here. Now if we take a graph like y equals x squared and we translate it three units to the right, what we're doing is a basic method of transformations of functions. Because we should already know that if we've got a curve like y equals x squared, if we were to call it, say, g of x equaling x squared, then to move a graph three places to the right, I need to replace the x in g of x with x minus 3. So the dotted graph here is the graph of g of x minus 3 and g of x minus 3 would be x minus 3 all squared. Now when I've got that graph there, in order to pull it four places downwards, I've now got to subtract 4 from this function. So in other words, the red graph, y equals f of x, will be x minus 3 all squared and then minus 4. So this would be our equation, y equals x minus 3 all squared minus 4. Now you could leave it like that or you might want to just expand the bracket. If you do, you're going to get that this is going to be x squared, then you're going to get twice the product, the product being minus 3x, so we double that, that would be minus 6x, then you've got minus 3 squared which is plus 9 and then subtract the 4. So you end up with x squared minus 6x and 9 take 4 is plus 5. So that gives you y or f of x, the equation of the curve. Okay, and you can see just as well that the 5 here is the 5 on the end here. When x equals 0 you can see it crosses the y-axis at 5, so that's quite a nice check to, to notice. Okay. Now in the last part, we're asked to show that uh, the function does not have an inverse. And that's very easy to see because it's not a one-to-one -one function. In other words, you can see that if I had a particular y value, okay, let's just say we had this one, you can see that for this y value, you've got this x value that corresponds to it. And you've also got, if we were to just carry on across the graph like that, okay, you could see that you've got this point here which also has another x value. So for this particular y value, you've got two values of x. It's not one to one. In other words, for any one value of x, you've got one value of y. And for any one value of y, you don't have one value of x. It's the fact that for y, you don't have one value of x. So it's not one-to-one. -one. So therefore, it has no inverse. So if I was writing the answer to that part then, that's part D, then I would say the function, okay, f is not one-to-one. One-to-one. Okay, one to one. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then how you could go about answering both those parts to that question.